Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife, Jenny Thomas, I believe her name is pronounced Jenny, um, well, we already know that she tried to stop the 2020 election from being certified for Joe Biden. She actually tried to use her influence as the spouse of a Supreme Court justice to overturn the results of a Democratic election. And it's now getting worse because we're learning that she didn't just reach out to Arizona lawmakers and Mark Meadows and try to convince him to not concede, but she also reached out to Wisconsin lawmakers to also get them to find some way to subvert the election primarily by doing the fake elector thing that is now being investigated in states like Georgia. So as the Washington Post explains, Virginia Jenai Thomas, the conservative activist and wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, pressed lawmakers to overturn Joe Biden's 2020 victory, not only in Arizona, as previously reported, but also in a second battleground state, Wisconsin, according to emails obtained under state public records law. The Washington Post reported this year that Jenai Thomas emailed 29 Arizona state lawmakers, some of them twice, in November and December of 2020. She urged them to set aside Biden's popular vote victory victory and, quote, choose their own presidential electors, despite the fact that the responsibility for choosing electors rests with voters under Arizona state law. The new emails show that Thomas also messaged two Republican lawmakers in Wisconsin, State Senator Kathy Bernier, then chair of the State Elections Committee, and State Representative Gary Tauchin. Bernier and Tauchin received the email at 1047 a.m. on November 9th, virtually the same time the Arizona lawmakers received a verbatim copy of the message from Thomas. The Bernier email was obtained by the Post, and the Tauchin email was obtained by the watchdog group documented and provided to the Post. Now, she told them to stand strong in the face of media and political pressure, and she said, and I quote, please take action to ensure that a clean slate of electors is chosen for our state. She quite literally is encouraging lawmakers and again, using her power and influence as the spouse of a Supreme Court justice to institute fake electors, then presumably knowing that they'd be covered because if this made it to the Supreme Court, if the fake electors were implemented and challenged, her husband has them covered. I mean, at this point in time, it's not that surprising knowing what we now know, but I cannot emphasize how serious this is. This is, again, and I sound like a broken record, but we can't let this fact be lost on us. This is the wife of a Supreme Court justice trying to subvert democracy, overturn an election illegally because she didn't like the results. Now, on top of that, we know that she didn't just email lawmakers in Arizona and Wisconsin, as I stated, but she also sent texts to Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, urging him to not concede. She was also reportedly in touch with John Eastman, who's the attorney that told Trump that he has the power to delay Congress's certification of the election, and also that the vice president has the authority to reject the slate of electors and effectively nullify the results of the election. So imagine 2020, she's talking to John Eastman, texting Mark Meadows, telling him, Tell Trump not to concede, yada, 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 all this bullshit. She's also encouraging, you know, Arizona and Wisconsin lawmakers to go forward with this slate of fake electors. And, and this is serious, like to, to encourage them to institute fake electors. This is serious. I mean, need I remind you that in Georgia, the Fulton County District Attorney is literally investigating the Trump team's plot to overturn the 2020 election and fake electors there were subpoenaed. So, I mean, she was completely brazen, which tells us two things. She was either dumb or she believed that she was above the law and wouldn't be held accountable legally for this. Now, I want to direct your attention to one more thing that I find hilarious. So, do you recall back in June during the uh, January 6th public hearings when uh, she apparently said that she would uh, testify? So they requested that, that she would voluntarily testify. It's been a while, so let me kind of jog my memory. She said she would voluntarily uh, testify after they requested that. But um, let's remember what happened. At the time, Thomas indicated she would comply. Quote, I can't wait to clear up misconceptions. I look forward to talking to them, Thomas told the Daily Caller, her former employer. Less than two weeks later, on June 28th, Pauletta told the committee, this is her attorney, that while Thomas remained willing to sit for an interview, he did not believe there was sufficient basis for her to do so. Oh, really? You actually believe that? Hmm. Somehow I doubt that. Now, look, 
this is very suspicious. So I've got to ask the question. Why hasn't the House Select Committee on January 6th subpoenaed her? If she's not volunteering to speak to you, make her. You have the authority to compel her. Why haven't they done this? I mean, maybe it's coming, but what are you doing? I just can't imagine you have somebody participating in this conspiracy to literally over, over the, uh, overthrow democracy in the United States and she just gets to get away with this? There's no further discussions? I mean, at least some lawmakers aren't willing to just accept this because Congressman Jamal Bowman tweeted, Justice Clarence Thomas is on the highest court in America, yet his wife was part of a coup to overthrow the United States government. He must be impeached. And I absolutely agree. And I want every single Democratic lawmaker and Republican lawmakers who are at least principled to say the same thing. Now, even though petitions are widely seen as useless, because, I mean, they kind of are, it's worth noting that more than one million Americans signed a petition calling for Thomas's impeachment. So the court is already facing a serious legitimacy crisis, and Clarence Thomas is not helping. Now, I cannot stand Hakeem Jeffries. It pains me to give him credit on anything, especially considering how ruthless he is at trying to, you know, squash progressive momentum within his party. But I do want to share a clip from him uh, because he responded to Clarence Thomas after Clarence Thomas uh, reacted to news uh, following the leak of the Dobbs decision. Uh, and, and he said something to the effect of, well, Americans have to learn to live with decisions that they don't like. So Hakeem Jeffries responded to that specifically. And what he said was right on the money. So I'll leave you with this. And if Justice Thomas really wants to deal with bullying in America or this problem of people supposedly unwilling to accept outcomes that they don't like. I've got some advice for Justice Thomas. Start in your own home. Have a conversation with Jeannie Thomas. She refused to accept the legitimacy of the 2020 presidential election. Why? Because she didn't like the outcome. And so instead, she tried to steal the election, overthrow the United States government, and install a tyrant. That's bullying. That's being unwilling to accept an outcome because you don't like the results, because the former twice impeached so-called president of the United States of America lost legitimately to Joe Biden. How did she respond? Instead, she said the Bidens should face a military tribunal in Guantanamo Bay on trumped up charges of sedition. You've got to be kidding me. And lastly, let me ask this question of Brother Thomas. Why are you such a hater? Hate on civil rights, hate on women's rights, hate on reproductive rights, hate on voting rights, hate on marital rights, hate on equal protection under the law, hate on liberty and justice for all, hate on free and fair elections. Why are you such a hater? And you think you can get away with it, escape public scrutiny, because you think that shamelessness is your superpower? Uh, Mr. Chairman, a point well, of here's, order. Here's a news flash Mr. Chairman, straight from the House Judiciary a Committee. Point of order. Truth Time crust to the, the ground will Time. rise again, and truth will Time. be your kryptonite. Point. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started shilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.